All right, guys, it's your boy Taco Phil here answering some more questions about my time as Greyhound driver. Again, my uh, these are all my opinions. These are, you know, these experiences are what I experienced working as a Greyhound driver. I'm not a representative of Greyhound, and uh, I'm not authorized by Greyhound to uh, be a representative of Greyhound. So these are just, again, all my opinions, things that happened to me. I'm sharing with you guys for those who are interested in being drivers and uh, those who are... Uh, you know, looking who are working and looking for tips and those who are interested in working. Uh, so I wanted to answer this question. It's a very common question I got. I don't think I did a video on it. Um, so the question I tip, I get very often is what's the longest you've ever driven? Or, you know, whether it be time, distance, whatever. So when I think about uh, this answer, I think about you have to break it down into three aspects. You've got the leg, You've got the run, and then you've got the route. So the leg is basically the time from which you start driving until you get to your first stop. That's one leg. So for example, if I'm going from LA to San Francisco, I will, depending on which, which run I have, sometimes I may be going from LA to North Hollywood, North Hollywood to San Fernando, San Fernando to Avenal, Avenal to um, Gilroy, Gilroy to San Jose, San Jose to Oakland, Oakland to San Francisco. So that one has a lot of legs. Uh, so when you first start off, you may be just driving for like an hour and then you got to stop and you'll be in a place for maybe like 10, 20 minutes. And then, you know, so you, you're, you're only driving the most that may be like two hours or two and a half hours, which is the longest uh, leg you're going to get, which I believe is between, it's either between um, San Fernando and Avenal or Avenal and uh, Gilroy, where it's like two and a half hours, where you're going to, two and a half hours, if you hit some traffic, the most, maybe three hours you're going to be driving. Uh, so that's a leg. So the longest leg that I've ever driven was actually in San Antonio, Texas. So in San Antonio, Texas, there is a leg. If you're doing the express from San Antonio, you will literally drive without stopping, without a authorized break. And I'll go into authorized breaks and unauthorized breaks here in a second without an authorized break of five hours, five hours. So I was in the seat driving nonstop for five hours. That's the longest leg I've driven. That was down in Texas. Texas has a lot of long runs. Um, you know, there just wasn't, there was a lot of small towns in between and they just didn't really stop. So that was the longest leg I've ever driven. Five hours, continuous driving in the bus. Now I have uh, skirted that leg. So, that takes me to the run. Now the run is multiple legs. That is the beginning of your day to the end of your day. And that's basically within 10 hours. And once you stop, you have to rest for a minimum of nine hours. So the longest I have driven was actually that uh, San Antonio. The longest run I've had was actually um, an unauthorized run. Yeah, it was an unauthorized run. So the the... The longest authorized run I had, and that was basically, or technically the longest leg. Let me go back. The longest leg I've, I've done without stopping, going from one place into the other, was San Antonio to El Paso. And what happened is we were behind schedule by like an hour and a half. And it was like, I think it was like one in the morning. And I was just like, fuck it. You know, the, the, rest, the rest stop we were supposed to stop at wasn't going to be open. And I think it was just like maybe a shitty McDonald's or some little spot where you couldn't really get much anyway. So I blew through it. So I did uh, nine and a half hours of nonstop. That was the longest leg I've ever done. And it was an unauthorized leg because we were supposed to stop, give everybody a break. I take a break, but I was just like, you know what, fuck it. If I stop and give these people like half an hour to an hour to break, you know, we're going to be, you know, damn near two hours behind. So I drove it nonstop. And trust me, when I got there, people were like, dude, there was no break, man. It was like, we'd literally been on this bus for like nine hours. And I was like, yeah. 
He's like, I, I need to. Get, he goes, I wanted to get you guys there on time. Some of you guys have connecting buses. So the longest I've driven nonstop was about nine hours. And that's not getting out of the seat, not stopping the bus. So then there's a run. So run is, like I said, basically from the time you start your day to the time you end your day. Now the run is a compilation of driving time and non-driving time. So you're still on the clock, you're still responsible for the bus or for passengers, but you're not driving. So when you're driving, you could, you're supposed to only allow, you're only allowed to drive for a maximum of 10 hours per day. And then you have to get a minimum of eight hours and Greyhound gives you a nine hour uh, rest minimum by federal law so uh but you can work on the clock for 15 hours meaning that you can only drive for 10 hours but then you can do an additional five hours of off the clock work so where this typically comes in is what we call cushioning so cushioning is basically when you are being paid to ride the bus or to travel on greyhound or Greyhound's dime in order to fulfill another job. And where this will typically come in is um, when you need to connect to pick up another bus or connect to a certain location to do another run. For example, one of the longest, um, one of the longest trips I've ever done, or I should say one of the longest runs I've ever done was, um, I think it was, it was about, I think it was from LA to San Francisco uh, using the 101. And if you've ever driven up the 101, there's a lot of winding, there's a lot of little areas. It takes a lot longer than taking the five. If you do the five, it's like eight hours. But if you do the 101, it's like 12, 13 hours. So what happened was basically I spent four hours sitting on the bus uh, while another driver drove up to San Bernardino. And then I drove from San Bernardino up to San Francisco. So when all said and done, I spent about 12 hours on the bus working, you know, four hours of that. I was sitting and waiting to, uh, to take over the bus and then continue and driving on. So the longest work that I've done was about like 12 to 14 days, 12 to 14 hours. You know, I've had plenty of 12 hour days where, you know, I was loading, unloading, but that was one where I was on the bus. I was sitting on the bus and then I had to then drive that same bus. So, you know, because otherwise, you know, my long days typically are loading, unloading, pre-tripping, post-tripping, waiting, you know, all that good stuff. So the longest route that you can get now, a route is basically just a combination of multiple runs. Uh, together. Now, if you're on the West Coast, one of the longest routes you can get is going to be from uh, Los Angeles to Portland, Oregon. So if you do that one, it's one of the highest paying, but it's also one of the most miserable ones. So you're going to drive from Los Angeles to Sacramento, which is about eight or so hours, nine hours, depending on what time you leave. And then you have to sit on a bus that takes you from Sacramento to Reading, which is a four hour trip. And then after that four hours, you get to rest and then you get to drive from uh, Reading to Portland, Oregon. And that's a hell of a drive because that one is like, it's supposed to be nine and a half hours, but it can easily stretch, you know, if you don't plan it right or you just run into a little bit of traffic, you can, that can easily be a nine, it can easily be a 10 to 10 hours and 20 minutes of driving. You know, I did that run once and it was about, again, once I left Reading, it was about a 12 hour day and it was 10 and a half hours of driving. Yeah. So they have a thing where if you hit traffic, you can do an additional two hours and use traffic as an excuse for continuous driving. So yeah, that was that Reading, that LA to Reading or LA to um, Portland run, I think is like 20 hours. I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's either like 19 or 22 hours. So that's like the longest run, that's the longest route I've ever done. And then the worst part is you only, when I did it, you only got nine hours rest in, or in Portland. And then you had to turn around and come right back down. You know, like when I was doing a Reading run or not Reading, when I was doing a, the Arcata run, I would go up and that was 
about seven, it was about like seven, eight hours driving up. I got to rest for 11 hours and then I would drive up to Arcata, which was, you know, because of the time of the night, it was only taking me like six hours. And then I got to rest for 11 hours and then come back down and do it all again. In the Portland run, you don't get to do all that. You, you spend pretty much four days on the bus and out of those four days, you're spending probably like about, probably about like, shit, I think about it, maybe like 19 hours on the bus. It's a long route. It's a long, long route. So again, depending on where you are, you, you might have a lot of small runs, you know, like it's very common for us to do the LA to uh, San Diego and that's only four hours, but you know, it's an eight hour day. You know, you drive down there, you sit there for maybe like a half hour, hour, and then you drive right back. So, you know, that's a good run. You're home, you know, that night. So that's the longest that I've driven. Uh, your experience may be different depending on where you're located. You know, there are a lot of East Coast guys who drive from like New York to Atlantic City or on all over the East Coast. And they have really long days, not because they're doing a lot of, uh, not because their runs are long, but because they have a lot of legs. So basically, you know, there's a lot of turnarounds. And the next thing you know, you know, they're driving for just like, you know, two, three hours. They're stopping, driving for two, three hours and then turn, coming back. And the next thing you know, you know, that's that's eaten up, you know, like 12 hours of just driving in one day, you know, or, you know, 15, 16 hours sometimes of just work, you know, between the stops, driving and all that stuff. So that's what you're going to experience as, uh, you know, a driver, especially if you're doing extra board. Now with extra board, the cool thing about extra board is um, you do you do a lot of driving, but you don't do a lot of routes, you know. So if you are doing, you'll do a lot of, of uh, runs. So if you are a extra board driver, which everybody starts off as, you're not going to do Portland run that often. You'll do tons of L.A. to Sacramento. But it's rare when you're going to take that run all the way up to Portland. You know, they might just put in a Sacramento driver to continue it on. So you, know, you might not, you're, you're highly, it's highly doubtful you're going to be in that situation, especially if you have a good driver manager. A lot of driver managers like to keep their guys local. You know, they don't, because, you know, if you get to Sacramento, you are a Sacramento driver. So if your manager doesn't book you for a trip coming back or get you a run coming back, they could lose you for days, you know. That's what happened to me when I first started. I drove out to Vegas and Vegas got a hold of me and they started sending me all types of places doing Vegas runs. And it wasn't until I got back that they were just like, what the hell, you've been gone for like you know a couple of weeks. And I was just like, yeah, the motherfuckers thought I was a Vegas driver. And the next thing you know, I'm like all over doing Vegas runs. So, you know, uh, be aware of that. You always have the option to say no. You know, like I said, be proactive. If you want those runs, make good money. You tell them, hey, you know, they're just gonna send me back to LA. I want to do this run. I want to make that extra money. I want to get that second rest. You get extra pay for all those long runs. You get paid for all that stuff. You get, you know, your time and a half so after a certain amount of hours. You get your, you know, second rest, your meal pays. So it adds up and you'll make good money. You know, those San Antonio runs are long from El Paso, San Antonio. That's a long run. But that run right there is like almost a thousand dollar run right there. I mean, you know, you do it going there and back and yeah you'll easily make like shit i think i paid i think that run pays on if you're from if you're from not from el paso and you're like a extra board driver from a different city or a different state and you you get sent to el paso to do that run you can easily i think i made like 13 to 1600 dollars in just like four days of just doing that run so uh you know you can make good money so that's my that's my answer for you know what's the longest I've personally driven. Like I said, I'm not a representative of Greyhound. You know, I'm just a, a random guy who, who you know works as a worked as a driver, and these were my opinions. So you know, if you guys have any more comments, leave them down below. I'll try to answer them if I can. Um, you know, again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching my videos, and I'll talk to you guys later.